see how this auto trans does. I told you. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hot Take. Today, we are in a 2006 93 Arc, which is the is it a mid you said mid level trim? Yep, mid trim level. Mid trim level with the turbo four cylinder. And would you like to talk a little bit about this car? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is the 2.0 Big T version, the mid trim level. Um, my wife purchased this car about 10 years ago, and it's been our daily driver on and off since then. It has a first generation uh, GM Ecotec engine in it, uh, turbocharged, makes 210 horsepower, about 220 foot pounds of torque, where it's been well loved and also well abused. <laughs> <laughs> well loved and well abused. You love to see that in a car. Let's go ahead and hop on the road and see how it drives. Oh, it's got a good pap. Yeah. yeah That's not too bad pep. at all. It takes a bit longer for this turbo to spool up on this than in the V6, but... Right. So, for the viewers out there, we did the later style Saab 9.3 with these, the Aero XWD. Yep. So, it's the uh, V6 turbo all-wheel drive. Click up here if you'd like to check that one out. This is the earlier style. It's the pre-facelift, just that they did in 07. Facelift was an 08. Oh, 08. Okay. Yep. So we're checking this guy out. My initial impressions, it's a little, it's a little more compact than the older style one. And it's a little tighter, which we'll see when it gets to some turns up here. But over kind of the rough pavement, it's not as forgiving over a lot of the bumps. But it's not rough riding. I would say this is a little more comparable to like a 3 Series, which technically the other one was too, but it just felt a little bigger. Yeah, there's a bit different components post facelift as well. Suspension was one of them, and especially in the XWD, uh, the other sub, it had uh, the self adjusting suspension, which was no longer in it, but it still had newer, um, nicer suspension components. Okay, so these a lot of these are original ish. Uh, yeah, everything on this is original still. I see. Oh, we have the green. I like the green. Gauges. Yeah. Green gauges, I like too. Well, I will say this thing is pretty athletic, all things considered. I mean, it took a lot of those turns with relative ease, and it was pretty, pretty planted. Maybe go a little harder at some of these turns up here. We also do have a manual mode, technically, but you said no sport mode. Yep, no sport mode in this one. Just, uh. Does it, uh, rev match for you? Oh, okay. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I, I guess it would, yeah, because it's all computer control. I hope. Oh, it does. It's just a little a little slower. Gotta give it a minute. Yeah. Five speed automatic. Oh, yeah. It's got good torque up there. Yeah. It has that nice kind of like mid-high RPM torque range, which is nice. Really wants you to rev it out. Yep. It's very quiet though. Yeah, with that stock exhaust, it's quite quiet. Yeah, the filter, you said you hear a little bit of turbo noise? Yeah, yeah, especially when you get, like before you actually get up to speed, if you build up the turbo and then you decide to dump it, you'll really hear that Oh yeah, like lower lower RPM. Yeah. The brakes on this don't feel quite as keen to stop as I would like them to. Definitely a lot smaller brakes on this than the other Saab. So. Yeah, the other one felt a little, they felt a lot more, a lot beefier. These kind of feel more like Econobox brakes. Yep. Which... They're quite small in the back. Are they? Yeah. It's, it's calipers all around, right? Yeah, you said it was. Which is nice. 06, you never know. Yeah, it was kind of like one of those final, some of the really cheap cars might have still had drums by then, but I think mostly cars were all calipers. Yeah. And 210 is not a small amount of horsepower. No, and especially for the year, that was a good amount of True. horsepower. True. Yeah, like 210 now is no big deal. Back then, this thing was probably a little... And then even for the... Um like the Ecotec engines for GM, this is, I think, the highest horsepower they put on the first generation Ecotec engine. 
He yeah. He went into the Cobalt SS with the supercharger, the Ion Redline with the supercharger. We'll try downshift. Three. So if I give it a little bit of revs, it'll kind of do it a little quicker, but... Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was trying to say earlier is you don't have to rev match but if you're gonna like drop down for power wise or do like brake boost or something you definitely you know rev match will help out in that aspect i had to check again and make sure i was <laughs> i was doing up for plus up for plus yeah that's one of the best parts of the last video yeah i was i was so embarrassing i was like come on upshift oh no but then i watched uh when you did the the other BMW. Um, the 5 Series? Yeah, the 5 Series. And I, I saw you do it on that one, and I was like, oh, it actually is backwards with the BMWs for that. <laughs> yes, it is. Let's see how this Auto Trans does. I told you. <laughs> It's funny, it being on the 16s, I bet if you had a 17 inch wheel and a little bit of wider tire, this thing would grip up all the way. Probably, yeah. Yeah, like I said, you can, you can break those tires. And like, it's not the greatest tread on these tires, they're fairly old, but I mean, it's still got enough to where it's surprising that it can break on dry pavement. Like, oh yeah, I got a bit of torque steer too when I did that. Uh -huh. Oh, you know, it's, it's fun. Yeah, I almost enjoy driving this one more than the V6 Aero. Just, it feels zippier. It might not actually be quicker, Yeah, you know, it does. I actually voice that same feeling. The other one felt more luxury car-esque. Well, this one doesn't necessarily feel... This one feels more like a, a cheap car with a tuxedo as opposed to a proper luxury car. Right. Like, Which, a, like a factory-tuned car kind of thing. Yeah, it just feels like a, like a lower-end car that they made nicer. I suppose the other one, which just feels more like a the later model, which feels more like a built up as meant to be a luxury car. Yeah. A little. Oh yeah, you have to. That's on volume, and then you have select. Yeah. And then this, this knob is to control things up on the secondary display up there. Oh, okay. So you see, okay, so that's fuel temperature. Uh, it's a little screwy to where it goes backwards sometimes when it's supposed to go forwards, but I this think it needs some like contact cleaner inside of it. <laughs> Is that a range? Um, you can like program it to set trips and things so it can tell you like your distance to destination if you program it into it. I've never messed around with any of that. Uh, oh, that's cool. I like that. This is a cool little car. Yeah, kind of futuristic thinking before that kind of GPS technology was available at the time of manufacture. Man. I'm still surprised at how torquey this motor is. It, it does not take a lot. All it takes is go from five to four, let the automatic transmission do its thing, and it just whoosh, yep. pulls you straight to, I mean, 160 mile an hour speedo. What is, is this limited at? Something, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know if it actually is governed, but like the statistics say that the max speed is like 149, 150. So, I don't know. I, I believe that I could do that, I honestly. I could do that too. On a stability standpoint, this is a lot nicer than a lot of GM products from this era. Look at the brakes again. Yeah. I, those Duralast pads, man. I don't know what they did, but they're, they're cracked. <laughs> now, I said at the start of the video, the brakes were not that good. You have to get into them a little bit. And that's probably just the pad compound. I don't know how they are stock. Or maybe, the, I don't know. Every aftermarket company I found has their own, like, their own pad. Right. But they're pretty good. If this is just stock brakes with uh, an aftermarket pad, not bad. One of the advantages to the Arrow, the top trim, is they did slap on the bigger brakes on it. So one of the first modifications that people do typically do to these sobs is upgrade to the aero brakes. Mm, I see. This is probably a third gear. Probably. It's 
So you really gotta get it over five before you start hearing it. It's a very quiet engine. Yeah, very quiet engine. Yeah, they did, did a good job with the stock exhaust on this. Yeah, muffling it. But that's a lot of, you know, performance complaints about it. And obviously one of the things most people do to their cars is upgrade to that aftermarket exhaust. Right, of course. You can get a really nice burble out of these with just swapping out the resonator. This is the OG Tuner Turbo 4, American one anyway. Unless we're gonna count, like what, the Probe? <laughs> maybe maybe the ZX3 Focus, the ZTAC, but now this is, those weren't, those weren't Turbo 4s, this one. This feels like it has a lot more life than those things. People complain that, you know, the GM Sobs, they're not actual Sobs, and I've never really been in or driven any kind of older original Saabs that had fully built Swedish Saab engines in them, but this Ecotech engine was a collaboration between like GM here in Michigan, Germany, and still the functioning Swedish Saab company. So Saab still had a lot of say in the design and fashioning of the GM first generation Ecotech engine. So. As far as I'm concerned, I think it still delivers like the older Saabs probably do. Right. And it's bulletproof like them too. <laughs> Just say maybe that's why it was good. <laughs> <laughs> You're that cobalt guys. You're not driving an American car. <laughs> right. Right. Not fully at least. Yeah. Not entirely. Inspired by Saabs. You know, I watch a lot of Saab videos online, and it's not uncommon for people to get 26, 27 miles per gallon in these with, usually with some, like, aftermarket tuning and stuff. But. Right. Oh, man. I'm so sad I haven't been able to use the turn signals more. It's, like, kind of flimsy, but, like, it, it has a nice click. It does. Oh. <laughs> uh, and the blinker noise is a good noise, too. Yeah, it is a good noise. Not, like, a an awful one. I don't know how you, how you quantify that, but, you know. <laughs> Whatever that's worth. Not awful blinker noise. Check. <laughs> exactly. I'll kind of roll in second. Wow. The gearing is just as long as the six cylinder car. Oh, yeah, because it's a five speed automatic. Yep. So that's why. Nope, oh, bumped my head there. Yeah, so it's, it's really just, it's missing that overdrive gear, is what it is. If you had a six, and then it was split up between more gears. That's what I thought was interesting with the eight-speed ZF transmission and the five series. That one at 240, power to weight's probably similar to this car, because that car's a lot heavier. But that car would dust this car, or a lot of other comparable cars, just off of the gearing and the launch. So I'm gonna do like 60 miles an hour. I'm gonna do like, the equivalent of what would be a kick down. You're at highway speeds, you gotta pass somebody. Put your foot down. Wait for that boost. Yeah, and then there you go. We've now concluded the drive of the 2006 Saab 93 Art. Gotta remember the trim names. Saab trim names are funny. Overall, it was a great experience. This car was fun. It was sporty. It handled great in the corners. Brake pedal feel was pretty solid. The engine was peppy. I was actually, I was pleasantly surprised by the four cylinder torque. Even with the longer five speed gearing, it was still plenty to keep up with the car. And overall, I would say compared to the six cylinder car, it was not a bad experience. I would not tell somebody that they need the six cylinder to have fun in one of these cars. Definitely not. Psalm four cylinders for the win. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else you want to say about this car? Um, drive one if you can. Uh, you know, there's still available and they're great cars. All right, and with that, we will give it a score. Firstly, the daily scores, utility. This Saab is comfortable enough and has a fair amount of space. Trunk space is adequate, and you can pass skis through them. Rear seat room is not that great though, even for a small sedan. I'm more comfortable in an E46 coupe than in the back seat of this thing, which is a pretty low point for this car. That said though, I'll still give it a four and a half out of 10. Everything else about it is pretty solid. Features, you get the same cool cup holders you get in the later style Saab 93s, which are a personal favorite. You have a decent stereo power seats and a cool little trip distance set for your trips. Materials are a little cheaper, but you still get leather seats and some soft touch plastic. Frankly, I've seen worse from a car from its era. I'll give it a four out of 10. The EPA rates this car at 22 combined, which I found to be pretty accurate even while performance driving. So it gets a five out of 10. 
This totals us up to 13.5 out of 30 for our daily scores. Cool factor, it isn't anything special and frankly fits in with traffic, so it gets 3 out of 10. But I think that's a good thing, and the context of this car. More on that later. Driver's feedback, the pedal feel is nothing special, good or bad. Steering feel was pretty good, and the car handles pretty nicely. I'll give it a 4 out of 10. Acceleration, this car goes from 0 to 60 in about 8 seconds, which is pretty slow. This would give it a 1 out of 10 normally, but it picks up a lot in the top end, so I'll bump it up to a 2. This totals our weekend scores to 9 out of 30. Should you buy it? I think you should. These cars are still really cheap, circling back from earlier. This is an unknown car in the car world. Honestly, I would not have given it a second glance had I not driven it. These can still be had for five grand in nice shape, which is a great value. 210 horsepower with potential for more. Reliability, inexpensive to run, feels sporty, looks kind of cool. Honestly, what more could you ask for? I think this is the perfect first car or an enthusiast daily if you want something nice and don't have a lot of money. I'm going to give it a 12 out of 15, putting it here on our list. I think this fits in right where it should. Not quite as good as a lot of the other cars on here, but the value proposition is certainly there. It would score higher in the should you buy it, but it is an aging sob after all. Most parts are easy to find, but you have a few quirks like the fiber optic audio cables, random impossible to find electronics, and other parts no longer made anymore that will become harder and harder to find as it gets older. At the end of the day, it's not anything special. Just a cheap, fun car to drive, which nowadays is pretty few and far between. If you're in the market for an inexpensive enthusiast sedan, I think this car is worth a shot. So the easiest way to tell the trim levels on a Saab 9.3 is just to look at the 2.0 badge. If it has a lowercase t, then it's the base model linear trim. If it has a capital T, then it's the mid trim level or the arc. And if it has a capital T with an arrow, then it's the highest trim level, the arrow. Never do that. Now you can tell your sobs apart.